Hey, okay, well, welcome to our second uh, online lab involving optics. And I'm going to take a little risk here. And uh, I'm going to actually record this one, um, even though I haven't given you a chance to even do the first one and got some feedback. So I'm uh, hoping that first one goes well. But uh, same as the first one, uh, let's learn from this and give me some feedback uh, going forward. But I thought I would do this one uh, because it involves the same equipment that we just did for the first one. And so I thought, you know what, as long as I've got all this calibrated, well, why don't I go ahead and make the uh, second video? So this is called the diffraction gradient and if you've got your lab manual uh, turn to page 40 and on page 40 about halfway down you'll see where it says the procedures and it gives you these five steps and so let me uh, outline these five steps and like the first lab let me be your lab partner uh, let me go ahead and, uh, and run the experiment and take the data and this time I'm going to write the data here on the board and you can go ahead and uh, you know copy it down and eventually eventually fill out the, the uh, tables and do the calculations. Uh, I don't think there's any graphs this time, uh, but then you're going to turn all that in. Um, I will say uh, that I'm going to go ahead and do steps one through four. Uh, there is a fifth step, but I don't think the fifth step will uh, be appropriate here online. So I'm just going to kind of throw that one out the, uh, out the window there and say let's, let's run through these uh, four. Um, I'll also say since it has to do with the diffraction gradient, the diffraction gradient actually uh, begins with the Young's double slit discussion in chapter 37 and then continues on into chapter 38. So it's probably best for you to study chapter 38. So if you haven't uh, already watched the online videos through chapter uh, 38, um, why don't you do that first? So work on up to that and do some of the, the homework. Um, or who knows, maybe doing this might help you then as you learn chapter 38. I'm not sure which one would be better, but I'm thinking probably doing the uh, book work first on chapter 38 um, on the diffraction gradient it probably makes more sense to do that one first. Anyways, uh, here I go, and let me start with a drawing, and so I'm going to head over to the far side of the board here and uh, say, what would happen if we had some light uh, coming into a diffraction gradient? And so a diffraction gradient is, if you uh, have done chapter 38, it's a little piece of plastic or glass that has tiny slits in them, and there's lots of them. And each slit is separated by a small distance D, and what will happen as the light goes through, there will be this diffraction of the light, and if there's a screen over here, which in our case it's going to be our eyeballs for the screen, then off to the side there would be, and let me just do this uh, color coded here, there would be what we called constructive interference for a particular wavelength, I'll call it blue, because the constructive interference for the longer wavelength would be at a slightly bigger angle. And so our angle is defined as how far off to the side of what would have been straight through. And so you can see here that in my drawing I am saying that the light coming in, if it is made up of red and blue, and maybe it's white light, so it's all of them in between, would then have constructive interference at a different angle for the red uh, than for the blue. And in fact, I don't have a yellow marker, but I'm going to use some yellow light in a moment, so I'll get the closest I have, which is my orange marker. And the orange has a wavelength between the red and the blue, actually yellow. Um, and so we would get constructive interference in between the red and the blue. So again, if you've done the reading, uh, you will have learned that d sine theta equals some integer times the wavelength. 
And so this is our equation for a diffraction gradient. And so this D is the distance between each of those lines. The theta then is this angle from the straight through shot. Then M is an integer and we can start with one and it could be a two, a three, a four, blah, blah, blah. Uh, we're only going to work with m equal to 1 here in the lab today. But it could be m equal to 2. In other words, if you've got constructive interference here, you would also get constructive interference at a second point. And so if I draw this same set of colors, this represents a bigger angle, m equal to 2, and this represents a smaller angle of m equal 1. And as we'll see, uh, we're going to be focusing our telescope on this light right here, the m equals to uh, 1. And so you can hopefully see here in the numbers that we're going to then, uh, need to have a small d. In fact, that's going to be our first step here is to get our diffraction gradient, set up the equipment, and then find out what that value of d is. Uh, in fact, let me come back over here to the uh, procedures. And so again, looking on page uh, 40 here and then step one says adjust your spectrometer well again like I said I decided to go ahead and film this one since I already have this all set up I I've got the light that can come through to the collimator and then I've got the telescope all zoomed in and and so I would say we, we've already got step one done from the, the last lab but Here's the important piece right here. Look at step number two. Step number two says, find the D of your diffraction gradient using sodium that has a wavelength of 589.3 nanometers. All right, so I'm gonna come over to here. And so right here where it says step number two, uh, let's start this one together. And so we're looking for D. And here's how we're going to find it. Um, I'm just going to take this equation for the diffraction gradient and uh, rearrange it. And so I'm going to send in light at a wavelength of 589 point, oh, let me come back here, I think it's a three, yeah. So 589.3 nanometers. And I'm going to look for this yellow light at m equal to one. And then I'm going to put in sign of, well, some angle. And so, like I said, that's step number one. So, well, let's do that one together here. And so I'm going to come over here to the uh, spectroscope and let me grab then the sodium light. And so here is the big sodium light. And the sodium light is yellow. And I'll just put it right in front of the spectroscope. And I have then the light coming in. And this right here, where in the last lab was the prism, uh, now it has my little diffraction gradient. And uh, that diffraction gradient um, then has these tiny, tiny slits in it. And so my first goal here is to find what is the spacing between each of, of those. All right. So with that in mind, okay, so let's look at the diffraction gradient. Um, and um, like I said, I, I, I've got it mostly uh, set up. And so let me just kind of look through this, and this is where we're going to have to be a team here together. So I'm going to look into the uh, spectroscope here and say, okay, what is 
this angle. And so the light's coming in, and so I'm going to adjust it and uh, zoom in, and let me grab my little flashlight here so I can see better. But it looks like I am at 21 point, uh, let me go two. So 21.2 degrees. And so coming over here, I can put in 21.2 uh, degrees. And I'll let you do the, the, the math here, but this would give you the value of D. And so this is then the spacing between each of those lines. And so now the experiment can begin, uh, although the meat of the experiment is step four, but let's look at step three. And so step number three says, let's go ahead and send in white light. Now, what that would mean is this, that if this is the grading, and I send in the white light, and the straight sh through shot is here, uh, Coming back and looking at this equation, uh, we can see that um, the smaller wavelengths should go with the smaller angle. That's why I put the violets here. And then the bigger wavelengths will go with the bigger angle, so that's why I put those here. And white light is all the colors, and so if I come back over here to my, my marker, I should see something like this. At some angle, I should see the blue, and at some bigger angle, I should see the red, and of course, I should see all the other colors in between those angles. And uh, so, what you're asked to do here in step number three is to go ahead and just figure out then what the angle is for the, and I'll go with the smaller one, the blue, and then the bigger one, the red. Because if you know and measure the angle then, we can come back over to here and say, okay, if I'm looking at order one, and I then find this angle for the blue, and I already know D from back here in step two, I should be able then to calculate what is the wavelength of the blue, and then what is the wavelength of the red. And so I'll put here the lambda, and I will let you go ahead and, and calculate the two extremes of the uh, visible uh, spectrum. Um, but I'll go ahead and uh, be your partner here, and I'm going to measure the two angles. So let me get rid of the uh, sodium one here. And, uh, I think we're done with that one for the day, so I'll just completely unplug it. And then I'm going to get a white light source here and plug it in. And so this will be the white light that I will send into my uh, spectrometer here in a, in a second. But before I do that, I want to see if this will come out on video. And so Ron, uh, like uh, before, uh, I'm going to put this in front of the, of the lens. And the, and the angle is, is right about over here at the, the sink. And so if you kind of put the camera over here at the sink, and I'll turn down the, the room lights and kind of <coughs> walk around over here in front of the uh, camera. And uh, here it is. I'll put the in front of it. Ah, there we go. And so you guys can hopefully see uh, the visible spectrum. Um, you can see the uh, what I guess on the on the screen would be on the on the left. And so that'd be the smallest angle, closest to the light source. That would be the blue. And then it goes, you know, through the whole spectrum, the Roy G. Biv, I guess, well, Roy G. Biv in reverse. And then it goes all the way over to the uh, red. And so that, that's kind of what I'm going to see when I look into my uh, 
spectroscope. So if you were here in the lab, that's what you would see. Although even then you wouldn't see that much because the telescope's so narrow, the field of view, you can only see a little bit of blue at one time and a little bit of green as you move around. So, so this is almost uh, better that you can kind of see the whole, whole spectrum here. Anyways, let me head back over here and turn the room lights back on. And so, where are the room lights? And so, kind of give you an idea, uh, this then is what's going to happen. And so the light's going to go in here and through the uh, spectrometer. And so let me just get the light source adjusted to the right vertical height. And then let me move it to get the correct... horizontal position and um, having a little hard time with it focusing and so I might go a little bit low on the lights here for a second so I can get my alignment better and it looks like I might be a little too high uh, much better. Ah, uh, there we go. And just one more adjustment. I should get a bigger bulb. This one. Filament so narrow, it's hard to get the alignment right. Okay, so I like that. Let me try the room lights on here again so that maybe you could see what I'm doing here on the video. Uh, but of course with the room lights on it's also kind of interfering with the uh, optics coming through the telescope. But, uh, oh good, yeah, I, I, that's bright enough that I can still see it well through the telescope. All right, so I, I you know, I've looking through here and that I've got that whole spectrum here and so let me move let's see to the smaller wavelength the blue one so let me put the telescope on the edge of the blue really violet I should say and so right there is where my brain says the violet ends and then I can see bl no, only black or that's, I can't see anything because it's black. All right and so this then angle is and see that's a 14 now call it 14.0 and so 14.0 is right at the edge of the violet. And so then if I go to the other extreme, and so I'll just turn the spectroscope until I get to the edge of the red. And just think I'm there, but getting a lot of red the room light. So I'm going to go a little bit more. And that might be a good reading. Heck, maybe, hang on here, I'm going to just uh, shut the door to my office here. Looking straight through the light in my office. Okay. Yeah, and I like that a little better. So I'm not picking up the red. Okay. Yeah, I'll call that it. it it's, uh, we'll, we'll just see what that number comes out to be, but even though I haven't turned the room lights all the way off. In fact, I've turned them down this much. Why don't I go one more? Oh yeah, I can go just a hair more. Now, now that's real good here in the dark. Okay, so I'm going to put it right there. And I'll turn on the lights so I can read it. Alright, and so... Um, 
the red is way over at, oh, let's see, 25, 6, 7, that must be a 28, and a 28.4, and so 28.4. And so there's the, the spectrum. And so let's calculate these. Uh, I'll let you guys do that and hopefully it'll come out to be some good numbers. We'll have to wait and see here. And uh, then let's go to the main part of the lab. And that's step four here. And step four then is to put in some uh, different light sources. Uh, four of them to be particular and so I'm going to put in these four and then measure the angles uh, let me just kind of read the book here uh, but the first one says go ahead and use hydrogen um, now I'll then just say hydrogen uh, we're going to see at most four but probably not even see four. There's uh, usually I see three. So I'm gonna kind of curious and I'll just record down. And so let me make three boxes for now. Uh, but uh, there might be a, a fourth um, when we put in our hydrogen. Uh, let's also then look at helium like we did in the uh, last lab. And so let's look at the angle and the wavelength. Four, five, six, seven. I think we're going to end up seeing seven. Maybe we'll get lucky and there'll be a, a few more. Uh, then it says look at mercury. Okay, so we'll look at mercury. And uh, it's been a while since I looked at mercury, but I, I think there's uh, three there too. Uh, memory serves me right. And so I'm going to put three here for, for starters. And then finally, the last one is the uh, neon. And the neon is actually under a... Oh, uh, uh, let me uh, move this a little further over so it's not blocked by that pole. Okay, so neon... Uh, there's quite a few of them. So I'll just pick a seven out of them and we won't do all, I think there's like 27 of them or some uh, large number uh, in there. And uh, even the in-class lab, I never have them do all the ones for uh, neon. But I will say then, one of the points of the, of the lab is to begin to see that each individual element has a unique set of colors with it, uh, what we call its, its optical, its signature, you know, what, uh, what colors uh, come from it. And, th and this is what we, we, we use to try to do what we call remote censoring and things when people ask, you know, what is the, uh, you know, what elements are in the sun. Uh, I, I know that uh, you realize we've never, you know, sent astronauts to land on the surface of the sun and do any chemical reaction to figure out what is there. We have to do it by the lights that come from it or the colors that come from it. And so this is what that is. And of course, Ron just reminded me that we could send them at night and they could land on the sun. But obviously he's joking. <laughs> uh, but this is uh, this remote censoring here is a good good uh, strategy uh, here. So uh, that being said, why don't I do this one first and again I'll be your lab partner here and so let's go ahead and measure the three colors that we f see coming from our hydrogen and so I'll use the same light source that uh, we were using in the first online lab and that's the helium bulb which I'll Put that back in later. That's the one we were using last time. Uh, let me go to the hydrogen. And so here's the uh, hydrogen. And so I'll go ahead and uh, hook that up. Um, I'll go ahead 
and make sure I get the alignment real good. I know this is going to be hard to, to see. Okay, so there, there I've got the alignment real good. Okay. And so let me come over to where I think there's some color. Ah. And uh, I'll go to the uh, red one. That's the first one I see, and that would be the big angle one, so I'll have to work downwards from, from there. And let me write down that particular angle, although I lost my marker here. Here it is. And so this angle is... Looks like we've got 23 points. I'll call that a 7. And so 20... 3.7 degrees for what looks like a, a red one here. Okay, so let me look through the telescope back. Uh, and here's what looks like a turquoise one. And that looks like a little more than 17. Like a 17.3. And so 17.3, I'm getting a turquoise color. And then I think there's a violet for the third one. Yep, there it is. And so I can read that one. Let's see, that's a little over a 15. 15.4 and so 15.4 all right so again your job is going to be now that we've collected the data together as a, as a team go ahead and use these calculations here for a diffraction gradient and figure out what these three wavelengths are from our from our hydrogen all right well with that in mind I'll switch light sources here all right so the second one I've got up there is the helium and burn myself here let me use a little rag to take the bulb off which stole the electrode so I'm gonna put the electrode back here all right so let me find the helium ah here's the helium and so here is number two or of step four, number two. And so here's that peach color again that uh, we saw in the first lab. And so that should be about seven different uh, colors. And again, let me just go back to the straight through shot so that I can get my alignment. Okay, so there's the straight through. So I'm getting lots of light coming, coming through there. So I think I can uh, leave most of the uh, room lights on here and still see it. Um, and then uh, let me switch over here and see what do I see first. Ah, so here's a violet and um, so I'll try to go in small to big this time. Last time I went big to small just because I saw that one first but I'll Try to go small to, to, to big here. Um, and so this is an angle of, and it looks like I'm a little more than 15. It looks like about a 15.9. And so 15.9 for this violet, which as you can see is pretty close to the violet for the hydrogen. So the slightly different wavelength, but close enough that I would, in my eye, call them the same color. They're each uh, a, a violet. And so now that I've got uh, the first violets, let me come over to what looks like a blue here, um, and see what color, what way, or what angle I get. And so this is a little more than 16, and I got to read the vernier scale here. So why don't we call that a 
And so 16.7 is kind of that blue color here. Go a little bit more. It's kind of a light green. And so this is uh, is that a 17 or an 18? Let's see, 15, 16, 17. So it's a little more than 17. And then the vernier scale. Yeah, maybe we'll call it a 5. All right, 17.5. So 17.5 for the helium. And then let me go to the next angle. And so here's a green one. And so this green one is, it looks like we're still under 17, but barely. Let's call it a yeah, 1817. Hmm. How about a 179? So 179. Yeah. Okay, and then let me keep going. So kind of scanning across. My zoomed in telescope here. Uh, I get to a yellow one. And so the yellow one looks like 21 and a hair. What do we call that? 21 1. Uh, so 21 1. Let me double check that. Was that 21 or 20? Yeah, it's 21 point one okay and then okay so uh, let, let's uh, keep going let's see so that was the yellow one um, and then uh, I'll keep going along here um, and so here is a red one and this is a 24.3 so 24.3 and let's see if we can see another red one I think that's it. Yeah, let's call that it. Um, and then we'll, yeah, that'll be the, the last one here. So that's a 25 point seven. And so 25.7. All right, so again, you're going to go through all of these. Now, actually, before I get rid of this one, let's do the same thing that we did with the white light. I didn't do it with the uh, hydrogen, but I, I could go back. But I think it's good to see it with the helium. And so give you an idea of all these uh, colors. Uh, Ron, I'll put this in front. And again, the angle. So if you put the camera towards the uh, sink there. And I'll shut those down. And so this is kind of what it is look like when you when you look into the telescope. You see um, all these uh, colors. Um, and so yeah, scan over a little to the left. Yeah, there we go. And so there's the different colors coming at a, a to your eye at a slightly different angle. And so all I'm doing is moving the telescope. Uh, to focus in on one of those colors and then 
as you move the telescope, there's a little protractor. And so, again, if you were here in class, oh, that's what you would be doing. You would just kind of see all those colors and kind of like uh, moving the camera back and forth. You would just move the, the, uh, the uh, telescope back and forth until you got that correct angle. All right, well, let's go to the next light source. And so I'll turn on the room lights here. And say, all right, let's go ahead and put, what's the next one? Oh, Mercury. Okay, so this one I'll put to the, to the side here. Uh, the Mercury one is a little different, and so I'll have to get a whole new uh, light source here, but this is our our Mercury one here, and so here's the, the Mercury. In fact, I'll, I'll point it towards you again, and uh, maybe we'll kind of do the, the same thing, Ron. Uh, maybe I'll have you move the, the camera over to the uh, sink. Um, I think this is, you know, coming out uh, pretty good. But if I go ahead and I put the diffraction gradients in front, hmm. You'll kind of see the three uh, specks there, um, and so you, oh, you, and then you can see the second order. So go back to the first order, go from blue, and then kind of Oops. that green and yellow. Yeah, right, right about there. Oops. And then so yeah, that's uh, well, and then they're and they're not nice little straight up and down lines. Kind of a big unfocused blob. But you can see there's kind of a green and kind of a yellow and kind of a blue that's kind of unfocused there. But those are the blobs that I'm going to see when I look into my telescope and those would be the blobs that you guys would see if you were in class. And so let me go ahead and um, get this height uh, adjusted well. And those are the three colors. And so if I look through the telescope here to kind of maximize the lights, there we go. Uh, and then I will come over here somewhere and slowly scan until I pick up. Ooh. Might have gotten the two violets. There's the green, yellow. Ah, I like it. All right, I'm gonna get four out of this one. It's very faint, but let me put another mark up here uh, because I, I I think I can just make out the very very faint uh, uh, violet. The lighting is just good enough here. All right, so let's give a, a try what this uh, wavelength is. Uh, and so this would be a 14 point, looks like a three. And so a 14.3. That might be the smallest wavelength, yeah, because this is really in the violet. And, and in fact, it's right here. It's just inside of the visible visible range here. Yeah. Okay. Uh, well, that's good. Don't usually see that one. Um, okay, so I'll go over to the other violet one, the one you can't miss. And so this one is 15.5. 15.5. Yeah, 15.5. And so 15.5 degrees here, so it kind of matches close to that, that violet. Um, then coming a little bit more, to get the green. So Mercury gives off a lot of green. That's why grocery stores 
things can look really green in a grocery store. They got the fluorescent lights, which are made with a lot of mercury in them. Um, and so this angle is a, let's see, that's a 19, and then the vernier scale, 19 point, yeah, it's called a six. And so 19.6 there. And then finally, there should be No, we didn't see a red, and I don't see it now, so I don't know why I was thinking there was a red one. I guess because of fluorescent lights, they'll throw it. Oh, there, there it is. Yeah, there was a yellow. Okay, went right past it. Okay, so, and then the uh, yellow. Uh, and so, the yellow here is a little more than 20. And 20 points, maybe we'll call that a seven. Yeah, 20, double check there, 20.7. All right, so 20.7 degrees there. Yay! Okay. Well, I told you this was the meat of the uh, lab here, is re really using the spectroscope and uh, hopefully seeing the intent of a diffraction gradient is we can use that, of course, then to measure a bunch of different uh, wavelengths. And so if you have a, you know, a li unknown light source, you can figure out what color the light come from it. Or maybe by getting the color, you can figure out what element it is. And so then the, the last one, and uh, like I said, I'll just do a few here uh, because there is so many of them in our helium. And uh, we have a what we call a high pressure helium, uh, which is good because it, it's really bright. It's also good because it gives off lots of colors, but there's almost so many that because they run into each other under high pressure, it's not truly just a spectrum of uh, neon by, its, by itself. But let me kind of show you. And so here is the neon. So I'll put the neon here. And I'll Bring it over and lower this back down. Power it up. And uh, I'll work on the alignment. But I think you can see how bright this one is. And then how it has all the warm colors in there. And so it has lots of oranges and yellows and reds. Uh, let me work on the alignment. Oh, right there. And I'll measure just seven of them. But again, before I do that, let's do like we did before. I'll put this diffraction gradient in front of the uh, uh, video camera. And so if you want to get over here near the uh, sink run and I'll power down the lights and I think it'll show up. And you guys will see uh, how many different colors there are. And they're in the warm part of the uh, spectrum. They're all the uh, reds and uh, there we go, and uh, see how the focus does there. But you can see there's a lot of uh, reds, and uh, the red goes into the orange, and then the yellows, and even some of the green, and sadly the autofocus is going to blur them all together. But hopefully you can see that there, there's, there's a lot of them. They're really, really tight to, uh, together here. And so that's kind of what I'm going to see when I look into this spectroscope, and that's what you would see if you were here in class, uh, looking in that uh, spectroscope, you would, you would see all those, and then you would, you would take the telescope and kind of zoom in and uh, pick out a, a few. And so let me come over here to maybe the, uh, well, that should be the, uh, blue part, which I shouldn't have any blue part. Yeah. So let me go to a little more angle. 
And uh, why don't I pick on one of the green ones here? There's a couple of green ones. And so that'll be my, my first one. And uh, let me read uh, this angle. And so this angle is 19.3. And so 19.3. And hopefully that'll be like, well, very close to this green one here that we had for the mercury. And uh, I'll skip the other green one and maybe go over to a yellow one. I'll grab the yellow here. And 21. It's called zero, 21 zero. And so 21.0 here. And then let me go to an orange one here. Uh, maybe I'll do that orange one. And so this is a 21.6. And so 21.6 here. And I'll move my telescope a little more. Maybe I'm kind of at a red-orange divide. It kind of looks like a little fiery red. Yeah, let's stop on that one. Uh, and so 22.2. So 22.2 for kind of a fiery red one. And I'll go a little bit more about to this red one here. A lot of red ones. And this would be a 23.2 for that red one. And there's lots in these warm colors. So let me go a little bit further over until it's getting to, oh yeah, here's really a dark, well, dark's probably the wrong word, uh, blood red, like a blood red moon type. Yeah, it's really, really a, a blood red. And so uh, that's a 25.6, 20. 5.6. I wonder how that compares. Yeah, well, not quite the end of the visible spectrum that I could see because uh, we got uh, 28 back here on, on step uh, three. Uh, but it's near the end of the visible spectrum. And if there's any more I can even see over here. Probably not, or maybe if I turned off the lights, but, but I think that's a good place to, to, to stop here and say, okay, so here's your idea of the lab. Uh, you need to, of course, get out your calculator now and then fill in all of these. And so we have done together, and I being your partner, uh, have gone through steps one through four. And like I said, we'll just drop uh, step number Five, And that also means then for you to turn in the lab, uh, go ahead and answer the th first three questions on page uh, 41. Um, I'll even help you with them here in a, in a second, but go ahead and cross out the fourth question and... I don't know why there's not a fifth or a sixth and then there's all of a sudden a seven, but cross that out too because both of those just really aren't uh, appropriate here for our online one. So I'm just going to say let's answer questions one through three. And we really already have answered number one. Number one was that calculation in step two, so you've got that one. But I do want you to try this. Uh, step number two says how many orders would you see? 
And let me emphasize something very important. Let me come back to, to this beginning part of the lecture. Um, because if you didn't catch this in chapter 38, let me emphasize it because it's really easy to miss this. Because we write this as the integers go on and on and on. But the truth is, they don't go forever. There's lots of them, but they don't go forever. Because remember, the largest angle you could get is 90 degrees. And so what this question is asking you to do is to say, put in 90 degrees right here. You already got D from over to here. And if you use a wavelength in the middle of the spectrum, let's just do the yellow here, you will see that there is some maximum value of M that you can have. You, you, you can't see an infinite number of orders. And sometimes when we develop this equation and we lecture on this equation, we leave students with the impression that M can go on for infinity and, and it can't. And so that's why I really like this question number two. Uh, there is some higher order and it may not even be that big of a number because you'll see that our D is so small, and so hopefully you got a small number here, that you can see order one and you could even see order two, but you cannot see order three. If you were to put in an order to three and a wavelength for this sodium, you will see that you can't have a solution for the angle. It would require an angle greater than 90 degrees. That can't happen. So the most you can see is second order. You can't see third order. And that's what this question is getting at. So I hope I wasn't too long-winded with that. But they do want you to show that calculation and to show that you cannot see order three. You can see order one. You could even see order two. Um, they asked you to look in it. Obviously with the online lab, you can't look into it. But when I look into it, I can see order one and I can see order two. But there's no way to, to see order uh, three. And then of course, the other part of this, step number three, it says, what is the range of wavelength that you can visibly see? Again, you've really already answered that. That's really back here in step number three, where you're asked to say, okay, this is the, the smallest angle and therefore the smallest wavelength that the human eye can see, or at least my human eye can see. Hopefully my human eye is still somewhat good. I uh, noticed over the last decade that it I don't see quite as well on the end of that spectrum anymore, but um, it still see pretty good. And so I think I think this is a good limit of the of the visible uh, range here. All right, and uh, like I said on the other one, yeah, I'm going to have you write all that up and email it to me, and um, you can then see your scores on the uh, uh, spreadsheet. So that's our second lab, and I think I will probably not do a third one today. I want to see how these two go and then get some feedback from you before I go on and try a, a third one. So, and then uh, this is the only two times we use that equipment anyways. And so I'll get out the other uh, optics equipment for the, for the other ones. All right, so that's it.